Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And welcome to St. Aloysius Parish on this second Sunday of Easter. Divine mercy. A warm welcome to all of you joining us from your homes and to our celebrant this morning, Father Jean-Marc Laporte. Readings <coughs> this morning may be found on page 372 of your Sunday Missal. I invite everyone to stand. Our opening hymn number is 640, 640, for God our help in ages past.
for you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what form they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many signs and wonders were done among the people through the Apostles. And the believers were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared to join them, but the people held them in high esteem. Yet more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, great numbers of both men and women, so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, in order that Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he came by. A great number of people would also gather from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all cured. The word of the Lord. Praise be to God. The response to the song is, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His steadfast love endures forever. <clears throat> Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His steadfast love endures forever. The stone that the builders reject has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvellous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah. And give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Save us, we, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you to give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us life. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. A 
reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, <coughs> your brother, <coughs> who share with you in Jesus the persecution and the kingdom and the patient endurance, was on the island called Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, write in a book what you see and send it to the seven churches. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me, and on turning I saw seven golden lampstands in the midst of the lampstands. I saw one like son of man clothed with a long robe with a golden sash across his chest. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he placed his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, and the living one. I was dead, but see, I am alive forever and ever. And I have the keys of death and of hate. Now write what you have seen, what is, what is to take place after this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus said to him, 
Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. <clears throat> now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book. <clears throat> but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> So the resurrection was a personal fulfillment for Jesus. Everything he stood for in his life was vindicated. Now, during his earthly ministry, he struggled to be recognized for who he was, or who he is, I should say, by those he encountered, including his disciples. They constantly missed the point. After his death on the cross, however, <clears throat> the Father raised him to a glorious new life and gave him the name that is above <coughs> every other name, the name of Lord. The women, especially Mary Magdalene, soon heard and accepted the message. He is gloriously alive. So did the disciples of Emmaus. But, by contrast, the apostles huddled in fear and did not believe these first witnesses to the resurrection. There was still work for Jesus to do. His chosen followers needed to be shaped into a band of fearless evangelists who would bring his message to the ends of the earth in the face of constant opposition, who would become agents of his love and mercy. He did not give up on that. Far from it. Now, this transformation would take place over a relatively short period. Fifty days later, they were ready to receive, to receive the Spirit at Pentecost, and with great power and conviction, they began sharing the good news that Jesus is alive. Today's Gospel shows Jesus, Jesus' first post-resurrection encounter with his apostles where he begins to turn them around and to remove their fear and their unbelief. First, there is the powerful symbolism of Jesus coming into their midst even though they had locked the door for fear of their enemies. He breaks through the barriers they, put up, they had put up to protect themselves. <clears throat> and they found him standing in their midst. That he broke through their defenses, physical and spiritual, spoke powerfully to them, and it speaks powerfully to us. All of us at certain times are caught in fear. We put up barriers in our ways of behaving find strategies to defend ourselves from others. And the risen Lord constantly crashes through our barriers. Then Jesus bestows his peace upon them. Jesus had already spoken to them about his peace in his farewell discourse. <clears throat> peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. <clears throat> do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Now this peace 
he was now bestowing upon them. Now, peace is a foundation for ministry. The apostles received the peace which would enable them to be confident, to let down their defenses, and to be open to the presence and the gifts of the risen Lord in their midst, ready to receive the Lord's grace to cope with whatever comes their way. Now that peace is available for us too. It will help us to receive whatever the Lord has in store for us, to turn toward those who keep, who seek our help in any way. Now once they had received peace from him, they received a mission. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Now, Jesus had sent them on missions during his earthly ministry at different times. So this too was a reminder that the one who now stood before them in the upper room was the Jesus that they knew. The peace they received was the foundation for their mission. When they were tied up within themselves, <coughs> restless, agitated, in a state of fear, they were unable to enter into the flow of life that beckoned them, the life that flows from the Father, flows from them to all those they encounter, and flows back to the Father. What about us? Shall we sit on the sidelines or shall we enter into this wonderful dance? What if God constantly has new signs of life ready to emerge for all of us? Do we want to be part of the struggle to bring them forward? And do we want to be channels of God's action in our world? Now to assist them in their mission to preach and give new life, the apostles receive the Holy Spirit. Not in tongues of fire as in the Pentecost experience, but in a gentle breath. This gentleness is most appropriate because at this moment the Spirit is given to them to be agents of God's mercy and to forgive sins. <clears throat> and as we know, forgiveness is at the very core of Jesus' project. But when we hear Jesus' words, we may be perplexed. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now, is Jesus giving them, his apostles, an arbitrary power either to forgive or to retain at their own whim? That is far from his intention. He died on the cross, not in order to retain sins, but to forgive them. But at the same time, he respects human freedom. Should a person not be inwardly disposed to receive God's forgiveness, that forgiveness will not be effective. Now there are times where that may happen in our own lives. Priests, often enough witness this in their experience of ministry. For example, the ministry of the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Sometimes things happen that are negative, and it makes no sense for the priest to pretend that everything is all right, everything is forgiven, when there is still a real resistance, a real issue in the person's life. 
Now, hopefully, a wake-up call, which in extreme cases might mean that the priest will tell the person, well, you really are not forgiven because you really are not seeking forgiveness. So maybe you can uh, reflect and come to confession later when you're really ready for it. And then maybe this wake-up call will bring the person at that moment or else later in life to the point of being ready to receive forgiveness. Now God is always waiting for such people, for ourselves, to turn back to him. Another way of understanding this is to say, I want you to comfort the afflicted, to bind their wounds, offer them my forgiveness. But like me, I also want you to afflict the comfortable, those not receive, ready to receive forgiveness and the grace to transform their lives. Now, this kind of language is for us as well. So we know when to comfort the afflicted and when to afflict the comfortable. And the Spirit will help us to know what to say and what to do in each circumstance. Now these are the steps by which Jesus brought his apostles from reluctance to enthusiasm, from fear to boldness. He was equipping them for ministry. Now, a further step is found in his encounter with Thomas, but that would deserve a second homily on its own. Finally, let us remember that this second Sunday in Easter time has been given the title of Divine Mercy Sunday by the Pope John Paul II in the year 2000. The Gospel of today has shown us how Jesus was preparing his apostles to become agents of divine mercy, of a forgiveness which is entirely without limit. Now he was also equipping each one of us for ministry. As we celebrate today, <clears throat> we can call upon the Lord for the mercy and peace he wishes to bestow upon us and we can ask for the grace to be agents of mercy and peace wherever and however we find ourselves in the course of our lives. The response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christian people gathered here today in the spirit of the risen Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spirit of peace and true forgiveness throughout the world, 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those facing changes in their lives, and for those who journey with them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For continued growth in faith for the recently baptized, received and confirmed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our parish family and among our loved ones who are ill, or suffering, or in convalescence, especially Carol Guimont, Shirley Ricardo, Clarice Mascarenas, John Henry, Monica Vallard, Bobby Squires, Maria Maloney, and Father Joe Sullivan, we pray to the Lord. Lord We also pray in a special way for Marguerite Guimont and for Brigida and Giovanni Lisi and for the healing of Pierre Scorsi, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our own personal intention. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask Mother Mary to join us in our petitions. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The offertory here is number 708. Yes, sir. 708. <clears throat>
pure spirit. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day of the ball, to praise you and yet more glory, yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exult in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, with the angelic host, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna.
here to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not to take the change, but deliver us from the evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope at the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Lord is about and our Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins or on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. joke. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Amen. your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us all go in the peace and the joy of Christ. Thanks be to God. You too, Father. <coughs> so, there's just a couple of announcements. There's an update on about Father Joe. As mentioned earlier this week in an email to the parishioners, Father Joe is doing quite well in his recovery. There is a possibility that he will return to St. Charles to say Mass in the month of May. We will keep you posted. And there's a birthday greeting on the 27th for Roger Yamouri. No, not here. There's no anniversary listed. Have a safe and wonderful week ahead. I have not said something stupid yet. Good. Have a well, the recessional hymn is number 549. 549.